This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More about them later in the video. Hello everybody. So I have the engine disassembled and right here is the reason why it stopped. Right there, the valve spring retainer melted on the exhaust valve because it's got a little bit of play in there uh, and it's shooting exhaust gases up and it melted this. The, val the valve spring melted into there and it stopped putting pressure on it, so it lost compression. So what I just made on my lathe is these two things. These are gonna replace these. They're gonna go over top and then they won't melt because they're aluminum, so yeah. Alrighty, so there it is with the aluminum valve spring retainers. Um, I have one of these on there. The other one, it actually smashed it down when the exhaust valve got locked up. It really smashed it down, so I have to re-3D print that. And then it's actually ready to test already. And I'm guessing now it should run until the piston melts a hole through it, which should be another minute or two. But that's, that's crazy. Alrighty, I have the aluminum valve spring retainers installed and it's time to see just how long it'll run for. It'll also be the ignition timing because I don't think it's exactly how it was before. Still doesn't go. I think I'm gonna turn the ignition timing back a little bit, or I guess the whole the whole camshaft timing back a little bit. Okay, so I think I I think I fixed the issue with the valves, but I think the spark is doing the same thing again. So I might need to take that out. The compression being good now, I think it might be an issue with either spark or fuel. Okay, so the reason why that broke is because we ran into a very similar issue here. It actually melted the camshaft and that top piece. It didn't melt the aluminum valve spring retainer, but now it melted the top piece and then the camshaft actually melted. So that's going to have to go aluminum. The camshaft I think will be fine for longer, but it's that piece melted and then this started having a lot more friction. So yeah, I'll have to reprint that. Camshaft will have to be reprinted and I might try actually casting it out of aluminum but I'm not sure how that would go. I don't know about you, but that casting looks really promising. Okay, so I'm currently in the process of cutting the camshaft. It's going pretty good. I just casted it using my forge. Okay, so there's the new camshaft installed, and here's the old one. It completely melted that, and I think that actually the reason for it is is because when the exhaust valve is opening, it's having to work against the combustion pressure of the engine, which is anywhere from 800 to 1,000 PSI. So I think that it's pushing down so hard, it's creating so much friction, and that's why it melted. But I need to get a better one of these, because if I use a plastic one with aluminum camshaft, if it hits that valve stem itself, it's going to break off the valve stem. Okay, so I just 3D printed another one of these. And with this one, this hole in the middle here, on this one, it's lower down. So now when the camshaft pushes down on it, that plastic piece doesn't go beneath it because with this one the plastic would have would end up having to go it would have to go all the way in there and it would have to go not that far but it'd have to go in there so that was my limitation here was that had to be that small so now that that doesn't go beneath it i'm working on another one that's much larger so it'll give me a lot more room to work with okay so i just got the exhaust cut out here right there that's going to go like that now i just need to find a way to mount this onto the engine Okay, so here's my idea. I have this right here, and I've got bolt holes that'll bolt onto there, and I actually accidentally cut this too big to fit the copper pipe into there. It was super loose. So I put a little set screw in there, and now it'll be perfect. So I'm gonna mount that onto the engine, and we'll see what it looks like with the exhaust. Okay, so there's that flange welded on, and this is what I was talking about. 
it's really loose in there. So I'll tighten up that set screw and then it'll also give me really good flexibility over where I want this exhaust pipe. Okay, so there is the exhaust mounted on the engine and it looks amazing. And with that set screw, I have really good flexibility on where I want. And I just put some red RTV in there also to help fill in the gap since I cut it a little bit too big. But it looks amazing with this new exhaust. And so now all that's left to do is test it. Okay, so I was having issues with ignition. It wasn't, I wasn't getting any spark or it was super weak spark. I followed all the wires, couldn't find anything wrong with it. I, turn, I put a battery charger on the battery because that was the last thing left, and here it is. It's actually jumping to those, but since the ignition is timed, that shouldn't matter. But it's time to test now. Okay, so I just wrapped some uh, electrical tape around the spark plug where it was shorting. So I actually don't know what to expect now, but maybe it'll run. <laughs> watched it jump the gap again. Still jumping the gap. Okay, we got two layers of electrical tape. We'll see if she goes. so Jesus. okay it doesn't run within the next few poles i'm gonna bring her inside and see what happened you know what after all that run time the camshaft and valve rollers look really good i did apply some used motor oil before i ran it but they turned out really good okay so a couple things to point out after that run again the piston looks really good uh, that's still top dead center, and we've got a lot of buildup on that exhaust valve there. Okay, so everybody that was suggesting that I move the fuel tank off the engine, I have done it. I made a fuel tank mount so it's not on the engine, and now we're going to do some testing. Electrical tip gets hot, it stops insulating and it jumps.
Wait, are we starting to melt this? Damn. We're starting to melt this. It's actually gotten hot enough. Look at it. Yeah, I say you let it cool. Here, bud. Okay, so after all of that runtime, this thing right here started getting really loose, like just like in Camden Bowen's video. It started getting loose, so that's gonna have to go metal next. But everything else, including the plastic piston, is still fine. But this thing guzzles gas. It was only running for like maybe a minute and a half, two minutes top. The fuel started like right up here, and it's down to there. This thing guzzles gas like crazy, but it's super cool. Okay, so after all those runs, that's still top dead center. The piston looks really good. The exhaust valve has a lot of buildup, uh, and the inside of the exhaust has a black film, so it's running really rich. Um, but we actually broke this right here where it goes right there, and so I 3D printed a new, much, much heavier duty one, and I have a couple other parts I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna make a boot for the spark plug since it keeps jumping the gap from the rollers to the spark plug. Uh, but other than that, everything's going pretty good, so I'm gonna start doing, start working on all that stuff. Well, I made this uh, mold for the spark plug boot, and I let it sit while I was in Florida for a week. And I come back, and I tried taking it apart, and it ripped it. Uh, so I don't know if this is gonna work because it sticks really, really good to the plastic, even though I applied oil. So I'm gonna have to try something else for that. Here on my 3D printed engine, plastic has its limits. Here you can see on the exhaust valve roller, the heat and pressure has started to warp and melt the plastic valve roller. So I'm going to have to upgrade it to metal, and I have a very nice idea for that. These metal 3D printed stainless steel parts were provided to me by PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome one-stop shop that has everything from CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, metal 3D printing, normal 3D printing, injection molding, and vacuum casting all in one place. And to add to that, they also have PCB fabrication, as their name suggests. It is an awesome one-stop shop, and I highly recommend them. They are super easy to work with and is a great shop. PCBWay is also offering a free $5 welcome bonus to anybody who signs up right now. Okay, so right here I have the pieces after I sanded them down. They're still about a millimeter too tall, so I'm going to have to take the rest down with an angle grinder and then re-sand it. But these pieces are really nice. They are a little loose because my, my part was designed for the tolerances of my printer. But I'll just put a little Teflon or maybe a little RTV in there and it'll be just fine. Okay, so I have them all in there. As you can see, there is red RTV on that one back there because it's loose. And on this one... I actually made the gap a little bit bigger, so hopefully I won't need a spark plug boot because it wasn't working very good. And they're in there, all that's left to do is wait for the RTV to cure, and then it's time to test it. Alrighty, so I just removed a little bit of material from the valve roller there, and now it's not jumping. I can hear it hitting the, on the spark plug, but it's not jumping, so that's good. Okay, so PCBWay's new valve rollers are installed, and it's time to see how good this engine runs. Well, I might have flooded it, but also there's no fuel coming through here. I can't see. So I either I either flooded it or it's not getting fuel. One of the two. Probably flooded, but we'll see.
didn't sound promising. I definitely think we've got some blow by. Oh, yeah, we got no compression. Um, you know, that might have been it. That might have melted through completely through the piston if that's the case. That was a really long run time. I'm gonna stop talking, otherwise you guys are gonna get bored. Okay, let's see, is it loose? She's a little loose, not terrible. Um, compression though, so let's go to the compression phase. There is none. Ooh, it just fired. It's actually, that surprised me pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, there's none. Compression is none. It's a, uh, it's no longer a uh, compression engine, uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's supposed to do that. I have the timing chain off on. <laughs> Alrighty, moment of truth. Oh, yeah, the O-ring has fallen off. You know what? That might be why it stopped running. <sighs> Completely melted the piston. Again, PCB Way, thank you very much for supplying those metal valve rollers. I would have never been able to machine a hex with the tooling I have, so that was a huge help, and I it definitely worked. Uh, because if you look at the previous exhaust roller, it is definitely warped and bent a little bit. So, and it ran for 20 seconds longer. Got a total run time there at that last part of a minute and 11 seconds. And that is a new record. We actually officially made it over the minute mark. So yeah, thank you very much to PCB Way. Everybody watching this should definitely check them out. Okay, well, I'm going to end the video on this note. Um, the That's still top dead center, connecting rod, wrist pin, everything still looks good. We've got a good amount of buildup on the exhaust valve. It's still wet in there, so it's definitely running rich, but it seems to like running rich. Um, but yeah, everything looks good. Um, thank you guys for watching. The video's getting a little long, so I'm going to end it here. And in the next video, I'm probably going to make either a cast iron or aluminum piston. I'm thinking cast iron so it doesn't gal the steel cylinder. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.